quadratic equations by factoring, by taking square roots, by completing the square. And really the reason that we learned how to complete the square is so that we can use the quadratic formula and see where it comes from. And the good thing about the quadratic formula is you can use it to solve any quadratic equation that you ever come across. So let's review. If we're going to solve this by completing the square, remember we said the first thing that always has to happen is you need a leading coefficient of 1. So the first thing we have to do is divide every term all the way across on both sides by 4. So if we divide all terms by 4, then x squared minus, let's reduce this, and make it 5 over 2 times x plus 5 over 4 equals 0. Our goal when we are completing the square is to have something squared by itself so that we can then take the square root of both sides. Well, 5 fourths is not a perfect square, so it's not the right number that we need to turn this into a perfect square trinomial. So we're going to move it to the other side. We're going to subtract 5 fourths from both sides. Then we have x squared minus 5 halves x equals negative 5 fourths. And we want to add just the right thing. And whatever we do on one side, we must do the same on the other side. We want to add just the right thing in order to turn this into a perfect square trinomial. Remember we said you always undouble the middle, take half of the middle, and then you square it. So if we take half of 5 halves, then we get 5 fourths. So the number that goes in this box is 5 fourths times 5 fourths, or 25 sixteenths. And if we add 25 sixteenths to the left, we also must add 25 sixteenths to the right. Now this is a perfect square trinomial. It will factor. This is x times x, 5 fourths times 5 fourths. If you double 5 fourths, um, 5 fourths x and 5 fourths x adds to be 5 halves x. Because 5 fourths plus 5 fourths gives us 10 fourths which reduces to be 5 halves that we had in the middle. So it will factor as x minus 5 fourths squared equals, the only way to add these two fractions is we have to have a common denominator. Common denominator of 16. So let's write this as something over 16. That means 4 times 4. So I do negative 5 times 4. That gives us negative 20 over 16 plus 25 over 16. So if I simplify that, I've got x minus 5 fourths squared equals 5 sixteenths. Then we've got our goal, something squared all by itself. So now we can just take the square root of both sides. The square root of x minus 5 fourths squared is just x minus 5 fourths. And the square root of 5 over 16, remember we can pull that apart and think of it as two separate radicals. The square root of 5 separate from the square root of 16 means, here's where I am, x minus 5 fourths equals the square root of 5 over 4. We're almost there to solve, correct? We've got to add 5 fourths to both, to both sides. So x equals, start here to write it, 5 fourths plus or minus, because when we took the square root of both sides, and I forgot to do that over here, whenever you take the square root of both sides as a process of solving an equation, you must remember plus or minus. So really there's a plus or minus in front of this. Start here to write your solution, x all by itself is 5 fourths plus or minus the square root of 5 over 4. It's okay to write it like that. You might also see it written as x equals 
5 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 4, which is kind of an ugly solution. But if you store this as x, and then you go type your original equation, try this. If you type it in, and you, you would have to type in one at a time, you can't do plus and minus both, but you could type in 5 plus the square root of 5, close parentheses, and then divide it by 4, and then store that as x, and then go type in 4x squared minus 10x plus 5, enter, and your calculator will be So now that we have reviewed a problem on completing the square, this time I want us to solve another equation, but this one has no numbers in it. So we're going to go through the same process one more time. Let me erase this. And this time, we're working with ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. No numbers involved. Same process though. The first step has to be get a leading coefficient of one. So if we divide all the way across every single term by a, then that goes away. And we just have x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a equals zero. Our goal on completing the square is get something squared all by itself on one side so we can then take the square root of both sides. C over A is obviously not a square. It has to be C squared over A squared to be a square. So let's move it to the other side. So X squared plus B over A times X equals negative C over A because I have to subtract C over A from both sides. Then I need to add just the right thing. Whatever we do to one side, we've got to do the same thing to the other side. I need to add the right thing that will cause this to be a perfect square trinomial. That means I've got to have a square over here. The process is always the same. We take half of the middle, one half of b over a is b over 2a, then we square it. So b over 2a times b over 2a is what goes here. It turns into b squared over 4a squared. Whatever we do to one side, do the same thing on the other side. We're adding b squared over 4a squared. Now, this is a perfect square trinomial, and it will factor. It factors as x plus b over 2a squared. In order to add these two fractions, we have to have a common denominator. Can you see it? If you write down every factor that you see, you'd have a 4 and an a and an a. So you have to write down both 4a squared. 4a squared is the common denominator that we would have to have to combine these two fractions. To get from 4a squared to 4a squared, we didn't do anything, so we'll leave this one as b squared. But to get from a to 4a squared, we had to multiply by a 4a. Do the same thing on the top. 4a times negative c makes this negative 4ac. Let's work on the left side a little bit. If we put it in descending order, we're gonna, and we can combine the two fractions into one and write it in descending order with b squared first, then it looks like this. x plus b over 2a all squared equals b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Now we're, we're kind of getting close because we have something square all by itself. So our, that, that was our goal. Because whenever that happens, we can just take the square root of both sides. So if we take the square root of both sides, the 
square root on the left side just leaves us x plus b over 2a. On the other side, anytime we take a square root of both sides, remember it's got to be plus or minus, we consider both possibilities. And I might want to split this into two separate radicals. The square root of b squared minus 4ac separate from the square root of 4a squared. Hopefully you look at this and you say, oh, 4, that's 2 times 2 and a times a. So we can take out a 2 and we can take out an a. And now it looks like this. x plus b over 2a equals but remember this, if we're subtracting under a radical, we can't pull it apart and think of it as two separate radicals. So we're stuck with that. We can't do anything about this subtraction other than leave it all under a radical. But it's all over 2a to get x by itself. We just have to subtract b over 2a from both sides. Those are gone. So x equals, we said we start here, and there's a plus or minus that I keep forgetting to write. Don't forget to write that. Start here, x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And then if you notice, both of these fractions are over 2a. So we could clean it up just a little bit one more time, and we get here. Hopefully you're starting to recognize this. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this, you will recognize, is the quadratic formula. So if you solve a quadratic equation that's general, that has no numbers in it, only variables, by completing the square, you will derive the quadratic formula. So the last thing I want us to do is, the not, and the quadratic formula is wonderful because you can use it to solve any quadratic equation that you ever come across. So let's use it to practice a little bit. Example, down at the bottom of your notes, you are asked to solve x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals 0. In order to use the quadratic formula, you have to know what a, b, and c represent. So in this case, a is the leading coefficient of 1, b is 3, and c is negative 18. If we substitute those values into our quadratic formula, then x is equal to negative b, that makes it negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 3 squared, this is going to become 9, minus 4 times a1 times c negative 18, all over 2a, all over 2 times 1. In simplifying, students make a mistake right here. So, negative 3, and by the way, this first number is always, always, always positive. Even if b is negative, once you square it, this number turns positive. So negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9, and then the next thing you need to decide is, will it be 9 plus or 9 minus? Well, if you look over here, you've got negative times positive times negative. You've got two negative signs. That's going to make it 9 plus. So then you've got to do 4 times 1 times 18, and that turns into 72, all over 2. If we simplify 9 plus 72, we get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 81, all over 2. Don't stop here because we can simplify this some more. This is giving us the value of x. That means x equals... There is a square root of 81, it's 9, so negative 3 plus or minus 9 all over 2. 
And then I find that students get so used to get to using solving quadratic equations and getting ugly answers that they'll often stop here. Don't stop here, look at it and decide. This will simplify some more. Really what you've got going on here is x equals negative 3 plus 9 over 2 and x equals negative 3 minus 9 over 2. You can certainly add numbers. Negative 3 plus 9, we got 6 divided by 2, that gives us 3. And negative 3 minus 9, we got negative 12 divided by 2, negative 6. If you took a minute to plug those in, if you store 3 as x and type it in uh, to your calculator, type this, it better give you 0. If you check negative 6 in that quadratic equation, it, is, it will give you 0. So these two values we refer to as solutions. And since we're trying to solve an equation that equals 0, sometimes we also call them zeros. We also call them roots. And we know that it's okay to find two solutions because we said earlier, any time an equation has a degree of 2, if it's a quadratic equation, then it can have two solutions. Let me erase some of this and we'll do a couple more examples. using the quadratic formula. So we have to identify A is the leading coefficient of 1, B is 7, C is negative 17. If we plug into the quadra quadratic formula, X is equal to negative B, that makes negative 7, plus or minus the square root of B squared, so 7 squared is going to make this 49, minus 4AC, 4 times 1, times negative 17, all over 2a, all over 2 times 1. That means x equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root of, now right here decide, is it 49 plus or 49 minus? Because you have a negative times a negative, that becomes a positive. So it is 49 plus 68 when you do 4 times 17 all over 2. Then x is negative 7 plus or minus the square root of, if we add 49 and 68 we get 117 all over 2. And 117 I think will factor, let's see, 117 will divide by 3, 3 times 39, 39 will again divide 3 times 13. So, if we have the square root of 117, there's a pair that's a perfect square we can take out of 3. So, x equals negative 7 plus or minus, instead of the square root of 113, we're going to simplify, I mean, instead of the square root of 117, we're going to simplify it and call it 3 square roots of 13 all over 2. And it's okay to leave the answer like this, but realize this is really two solutions negative 7 plus 3 square root of 13 all over 2, and also negative 7 minus 3 square root of 13 all over 2. Two solutions. One more example. If you don't have this quadratic formula memorized, you must. Solve using the quadratic formula. A is 3, B is 9, C is 2. So x is equal to negative B, negative 9, plus or minus the square root of B squared, 9 squared, 81. This number right here will always be positive. 81 minus 4AC, that's 4 times 3 times 2, all over 2a, 2 times 3. Simplify. 
negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 81, you need to decide, 81 plus or 81 minus. In this case, we have a negative times a positive times a positive, only one negative sign, so that makes it minus. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, all over 6. So then, negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 57, and we subtract all over 6, that gives us the value of x. 57, I don't think we'll simplify. So that's about as good as we can do on this one. Notice that all of, the, all of the examples I worked so far have solutions that are real numbers. There's no negative underneath the radical. When that happens, the solutions are imaginary. Let me give you one more of those, and then I'll let you work on some. On this one, a equals 3, b equals negative a, c equals 7, solve using the quadratic formula. That means x is equal to negative b, negative of negative a turns into positive a, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Don't write negative a squared because if you try to punch that into your calculator and you forget to put parentheses around the negative a before you square it, you'll mess it up. You can always do this mentally, negative 8 times negative 8, positive 64, this number is always positive. b squared minus 4ac means minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, 7, all over 2a, all over 2 times 3. When we simplify, 8 plus or minus the square root of, is it 64 plus or 64 minus, we only have one negative sign, so that's going to make it 64 minus 4 times 3 is 12 times 7 is 84 all over 6. So 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 84 is negative. And when you see a negative number under the radical, the solutions are not real numbers anymore. They're complex. But we still need to see what we can do to simplify the square root of negative 20. Remember that's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of positive 20. The square root of 20 will simplify. We can take out a 2. So i times 2 times 5 has to stay underneath. Instead of writing it as i2, we'll write it as 2i square roots of 5. So on this one, right over here if I've got more room. X equals 8 plus or minus 2i times the square root of 5 all over 6. And then there's one more thing we should do. Notice that these are all even numbers. And so there, 2 will divide evenly into all of those. Remember we cannot cancel terms. We can only cancel factors. So if I factor out a 2, then 2 over 2 cancels. So the solution to this quadratic equation, the solution is not nice, neat, rational numbers like 2 or 5. Instead, the solutions are 4 plus i squared of 5 over 3, and you don't have to separate them, but just to, to show you. 4 plus i squared to 5 over 3, and 4 minus i squared to 5 over 3. So in this case, our solutions are not real, they're complex numbers. And there is a way to predict ahead of time whether your solutions are going to be real, like the first one that we did, the first example where we got nice numbers like 3 and negative 6. Where the, that's, those are real and rational. 
or whether they're going to be real. In this case, there are no eyes here, but there's a radical we didn't get rid of. So this is real, but it's irrational. Or whether the solutions are going to be not real at all. They have eyes in them, they'll be complex. So next time when we talk about the discriminant, we will be able to predict ahead of time what kind of solutions we're going to get. So practice on using the quadratic equation to solve equations, the quadratic formula to solve equations.